me a brief about your company and the products. Thank you for having me here. Um, we are uh, we are a Bombay based startup and uh, we are a SaaS startup uh, which builds a product called Web Engage. Uh, that's an on-site customer engagement toolkit uh, for online businesses, which allows them to uh, to run promotions and offers on the website, uh, which allows them to collect customer insights all in real time, in a highly targeted fashion. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, the company is being built by a pretty nice team of engineers uh, sitting out of Bombay. Um, the company was founded by me and my other co-founder. His name is Ankit. Um, uh, both of us were early stage employees at birth. I was employee number one, in fact. And uh, we led engineering teams uh, to, to the exit of the company. Uh, the company was bought by InfoMedia 18. Yeah. And um, other than that, uh, we, have, we have some pretty nice engineers uh, who built this product uh, out of Bombay. Yeah. Our clientele uh, is across uh, 35 countries. Um, and uh, we, have, uh, we have different uh, customers across domains, uh, e-commerce, content, media, brands, uh, all of that. So, uh, so yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much on what we do. Can you please explain how your products uh, work? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, so to, to just to explain that, I'll I'll give you a small uh, insight yeah, yeah, on on why we did what we did. Yeah. So while at Burp, uh, we had a small uh, marketing team yeah. which which always wanted to do things on the side. Yeah. Uh, you know, so for example, uh, hey, someone in Bandra, a restaurant owner in Bandra wants to pay you know ten thousand rupees yeah. um, for a ticker. Uh, that needs to be shown on all restaurants in Bandra. Now, that's a very one-off request and uh, the guy was willing to pay, so someone goes and changes the code and puts that, you know, if else condition in there yeah. and the ticket starts showing up. Yeah. Now, a month down the line, the volume grows and the guys come up with more weird requests. Yeah. Uh, hey, someone in Delhi wants to do this and the, someone in Kulaba or Juhu wants to do this and so on and so forth. So, there are different kind of uh, requirements that start coming up. And the biggest problem with a company like Burp at that scale is every such single change yeah. on the site has to go through a deployment cycle, yeah. which is painful because someone has to be appointed for a release, the guy has to make sure that the build is tested, it's rolled out in production. There's a whole lot of effort around that one single ticker that needs to show on few pages. And with that core USP in mind, we build this product. We realized and we feel that marketers should be allowed to run these kind of promotions on the site without any involvement of dev whatsoever. So dev is totally out of picture. You build your own promotions, you assign your own rules. You say, I want to show it only to guys coming from Delhi or Bombay. I only want to show it on my cart pages. I only want to show it to people who have made a purchase of more than 500 rupees and haven't checked out in 60 seconds and so on and so forth. You build all these rules from the comfort of a dashboard. And you don't need any code changes on a site okay. to make this go live. Okay. So the entire context of the product revolves around showing messages or questionnaires okay. on your website in targeted fashion without changing any code. So uh, what do you call yourself? You are a data company or a SaaS company? We are a SaaS company. We are, a, we are very well a SaaS company. And uh, we, we allow you to improve customer engagement on your website. Okay. So that's by virtue. Right. That's by virtue of a lot of data points. That's by virtue of a lot of analytics that comes with the product. But the the very v fact that we offer this product in a subscription based model, and uh, we offer you as a as a tool that you can you know upgrade, downgrade, or cancel at any point of time without any commitments makes it a you know perfect SaaS product. Okay. So uh, so you were planning to uh, launch a live dashboard and live chat. Right. Okay. What's the status of that? Right. So, so live chat is coming around September. So live chat uh, will be like any other. Um, as you know, today WebEngage is a bundle of three products yeah. where feedback, surveys and notifications rolled into one. Yeah. Uh, live chat is a very natural extension to the product yeah. wherein we want to give customers an ability to to be able to, you know, chat with customers in real time. Yeah. Um, and we, we, you know, we are in adding that product to the bundle. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the key things that we are, uh, we are kind of building in WebEngage is the very fact that each of the products inside WebEngage, if you look at you know the space globally, you will find competition. So, you will find thousands of feedback tools if not more. You will find a couple of survey tools if not more and same for notifications and live chat again is commoditized, so many of them. It, the problem with each of these, while they are great products, the data sits in silos. right? Today, we are in a very unique position to tell you that hey 
the guy who took a survey on your site today yeah. was the same guy who gave you a bad feedback okay. 20 days ago. Okay. Oh, okay. That's what you're building. Okay. And there is value for it. You know? so, so with live chat being a natural extension, will be built with the same perspective. So the guy you are talking to in a live chat session today gave you a bad feedback or a good feedback 10 days ago. Okay. You'll, you'll know that as an agent. Okay. So that's, that's the core USP behind the product. So dashboard? Live dashboard is, uh, is, is, is a pretty cool idea uh, that we have come up with. So we are kind of flipping the, the whole approach towards how you use Web Engage. Yeah. Uh, while the current product entry point will remain the way it is, we will introduce another entry point which is more about um, being proactive. So, so instead of pre-creating surveys and pre-creating notifications okay. which you are doing today yeah. in Web Engage, you can create them in real time. Okay. So, with live dashboard, what? Yeah, I'll give you an example. So let's say um, you integrated Web Engage inside your site um, in in a slightly advanced manner, and you're sitting in front of our live dashboard, which is yet to come. You'll see there are 20 people on my site, out of which 10 people are are on product pages, out of which five people have moved on to the cart page, out of which two are premium customers who have made a purchase three months ago, okay. worth rupees 5,000. Yeah. Each of these are data custom to you, yeah. but you can see them in the live dashboard. Okay. Your okay. agent gets to see them in the live dashboard. Okay. And at any point of time, yeah. if your agent says, yeah, these are the five guys I want to, let's say, have a chat with, you select those five guys, do a right click, say start chat, and you start chatting with those five guys. You say, I want to push an offer to everyone who is sitting on my card page for two minutes. There are two such guys. You select them, right click, push an offer. So that's the real time approach that we are now taking, which is what we call as live dashboard. Okay. So how many uh, customers have you been uh, over so far? A total of, so we count everyone as a customer, whether the guy is a free or on the paid plans, we count them as customers. What uh, paid customers? Total, we have close to 12,000. Okay. That's free as well as paid. Yeah. Uh, the paid numbers I wouldn't want to reveal uh, in this one. I can privately share it with you. Yeah. But we have a very good uh, conversion rate uh, as per usual SaaS standards uh, from free to paid. So there are those many people who pay us uh, across those plans. Uh, of all the paid guys, there are close to 10% uh, enterprise customers, yeah. mostly in India. Yeah. So from the likes of Flipkart, Zabong, Mintra, Healthcard, uh, Clear Trip, Make My Trip, Yatra, Home Shop, 18. All these are our customers, all, all the large players. Outside India, we are growing in the enterprise segment. Avaya, Intuit, uh, Udemy, all, the, all, all these guys are large enterprise customers. So, so we, uh, you know, we are, we are growing significantly well and uh, uh, we are taking care of, um, you know, a very healthy free to uh, paid conversion rates. Okay. So, which is your key uh, target market? Is it India or the uh, global market? I think you know we don't want to ignore India as much as people write off India as a market. We see a huge potential here, and we are still trying to you know build a very cohesive strategy around um, other segments that we can potentially penetrate into. So, for example, e-commerce, I would say we have done a very decent job. Uh, there is of course room for more. We'll do it, but we see huge amount of potential in BFSI. Uh, we see huge amount of potential in education, and we are now chasing those domains: insurance, banking, you know, all of those. And uh, we are getting some early signs of success there as well. So India will continue to have a good amount of focus. But that said, for this company to scale and be meaningful, this is this is the global play. Even today, 65 to 30 percent of our our customers are outside India, free as well as paid. So uh, and that you know that naturally works for us because of the distribution channels that we use and so on and so. Uh, most of these SaaS companies are ignoring India as a right, market. Right. So what potential? Uh, why? Is there any reason for that and why uh, you are seeing this an opportunity? I, I, I fail to believe by uh, why a lot of these SaaS companies are not able to monetize India as a market. Um, I think one one factor could be uh, could be the product and the target audience itself. Uh, we cater to we cater to new age online businesses, far more far more tech savvy, far more uh, willing to you know try out products, and that too we cater to marketers in those companies. Uh, we deliver ROI to them. So for us, I think the barrier to entry is a bit, bit low. 
because we deal with that kind of audience yeah. maybe if you're dealing with conventional businesses it's a bit tougher so i understand the pain there it's a tougher but for for any saas company which is focused on this segment i don't see any reason as to why it is difficult you know to sell to companies like okay, the ones sir, that you sell are you finding it very hard to convince an indian customer than a uh, global customer the closing uh, deal yeah. um in terms of signing a customer and bringing him on board it definitely takes more time in india more phone calls um a, a few meetings uh, face to face meetings uh, a lot of email queries a, a, a good amount of time trying out the product so you know we give 14 day free trial and for most customers outside india that's a good number at max people would ask for a week extension in india that goes on for months so you know people are in free trial for a month they don't wake up and then they wake up next month asking to extend it by further one month so that's 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 india for you uh, you know we have learned to deal with this not all businesses are that kind there are some very very uh, savvy businesses uh, who do it the right way but then there is long tail of uh, businesses who deal in such a manner but you know that's that's an that's natural progression of how things will evolve in india as well people are getting used to it people are opening up the cycle is definitely uh, bad as opposed to other markets but uh, we we have done closures and we have done good number of closures in india which is why i have a lot of faith in this market as well okay. collections are a pain agreements are a pain yes i mean you know those are things that that we have to deal with but but as such you know I, from a market perspective we think there is potential that's right okay so you are uh, following a saas revenue model so mm -hmm. could you please explain the pricing so we um, we have different pricing plans there is a free forever product okay, which is premium uh, so you are we are a premium product we have a free forever version okay. uh, which doesn't give you too many things uh, you can use it for feedback um, nothing much for notifications and surveys to use these other two products meaningfully you have to subscribe to a paid plan uh, our paid pricing is four plans basic standard premium and enterprise the basic is uh, $29 a month a uh, premium uh, standard is $100 a month yeah. premium is $250 a month and enterprise uh, we start with $1500 a month um each of these has different sort of features in there okay. and uh, features for example you know uh, in the standard plan you can only create x number of notifications yeah. which will be shown x number of times on your site with so many number of uniques and click throughs yeah. so we have those numbers uh, in place once you hit those limits you either upgrade or uh, buy what we call as packs you know more more extra packs for your notification of a service and so on so forth so uh, let me ask you so uh, uh, since your inception itself you started generating revenue because no of? we didn't okay. it took us it took us good 3 4 months okay. to get the so we were in private beta for 5 months okay. wherein there was no pricing model we were building other product okay. then we did when then we did a public launch and uh, i think we had to wait for good 3 months to get the first guy to put on this for us the growth rate So we have been growing at a very decent pace. Uh, I think month on month, uh, close to 30-35 percent in terms of revenues, uh, as well as customer base. One number I can, that can definitely share with you is we are eyeing a million dollar run rate uh, in revenues by end of this year, by December 2013. So uh, we are hoping that we'll get there. Uh, uh, you know, get closer to that figure. We are working towards it. So let me ask you. So uh, what percent of the revenue are coming from India? Um, i would say easily 40% 40% and yes. you, so you said that you are looking uh, you are targeting uh, uh, you are going to focus more on indian market so right. five years down the line uh, mm -hmm. what do you see uh, in terms of revenues revenue break up if you ask me a year down the line i would split it evenly between india and outside india uh, five years down the line uh, i think it's too long a time period to project but i see no reason as to why we wouldn't have overgrown outside Uh, as opposed to india india you know you can only grow as much so right so there is of course a potential which we are yet to unlock but once you're done there are only as many banks and as many insurance companies that you can sell right so we'll hit a plateau and you know that that number will not grow substantially after that so we'll continue to grow outside which is where the real market is good now what is your marketing strategy good question uh so today we are doing no paid advertising okay. no paid marketing yeah. you'd be surprised uh um, a big chunk of our uh, discovery happens through the powered by web engage logo in those products okay so every time a notification shows up on some site every visitor to that site sees that powered by web engage okay. and those who are site owners okay. they see uh, you know i also want to run similar thing on my site they click on that and come to the site okay. 50% of our sign ups and discovery okay. happen through that logo okay oh, across all the three products okay. yes so you don't need to spend anything on uh, thankfully thankfully that has worked as a good channel of course i mean 
uh, we are we are talking small numbers. So if I had to grow this ten times, we'll have to figure out ways to do it. But uh, but yes, that has that has worked out to be one good viral, uh, you know. Low cost, zero cost channel for us uh, for customer acquisition. We only allow enterprise customers to remove it, who in turn pay higher. So it kind of compensates for that. Okay. So what about the global markets? Or these customers are coming to this uh, this channel only, or you have a separate marketing channel? We do have we do have other channels as well. So this is almost 50 percent, as I said. Um, I was I was talking about this in the panel also. We uh, we put a lot of effort into uh, building uh, distribution channels uh, through other platforms. So, for example, we are integrated inside WordPress, Magento, Zoomla, Drupal, Shopify, BigCommerce. Uh, collectively, this account for 30-35 percent of our signups. So, that's one big channel. And the beauty of those channels is they kind of you know act as discovery channels as well. So, someone inside WordPress who set up a who set up a let's say e-commerce store or let's say set up a blog and he says, I want to collect feedback. Find me a plugin. WordPress shows all the plugins, and WebEngage shows up there. And just because you know the guy didn't even know web engage okay. he searched for feedback widget and web engage shows up he searched for conversion optimization tool and web engage shows up so that's uh, that's the beauty of these platforms they have their own ecosystem and we are kind of riding on that ecosystem trying to build uh, you know build this as a as a channel other than these two uh, we work a lot on content uh, if you have seen our website, if you have seen us on other channels, you would know how much effort we put into building good quality content and that has helped as well. Okay. What is your global expansion plans? That is a good one again. Uh, so we, uh, as I said, we are collectively as a company working towards that revenue milestone. Uh, once we do, uh, we plan to uh, set up operations in New York, a huge hub for commerce and some of the really, really large commerce companies are there. And our next goal after cracking, you know, e-commerce in India and the long tail all over the world, our next big goal is to crack enterprise customers, e-commerce customers in US. Uh, a bulk of them are in New York. So we want to set up operations there and uh, we want to, uh, you know, play with uh, some of our sales strategies around acquiring enterprise level customers uh, in the US by setting in New York. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, so, how many offices as of uh, now? As of today, just one. We are just only based in Bombay. We are just 10 people. How many? Okay, 10, 10 yeah. people. Okay. Yeah. So, and one other thing is that, you know, so which is your target vertical? Is it e-commerce companies basically or uh, other uh, companies as well? From, from, from our perspective, e-commerce. Okay. Um, because, oh, yeah, yeah. because they see immediate ROI, okay. right? So, uh, let's say you run a notification on the site saying, hey, buy now and get 5% yeah, okay, off, okay, right? Okay, you can measure it. Absolutely. Uh, for others, uh, for media companies, it's like, hey, a new movie releasing tomorrow, click here to check reviews. That's that's not tangible. That's not linked to your bottom line. Yeah. So while we do have a lot of customers there in terms of numbers, the bulk of revenues that we generate is from e-commerce, which is not going to change, you know, even in future. Okay. okay so last year you raised some funding from the yes. network as well as from GTI. Right. So where did you use the money? Um, you'd be surprised. A lot of it is still lying in the bank. Uh, we are. You didn't spend on uh, advertising. We, we we didn't, as I said, we. Company, you don't have to put on infrastructure. Right. right. No, we did. Uh, you know, in the in the world of uh, AWS and EC kind of infrastructures, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, we are continuing to scale on their technology, uh, on their infrastructure. Um, a very solid engineering team is what we have. Uh, I have kept my uh, cash intact uh, as much as I could have. Uh, with you know, with very minimal spends on uh, paid marketing or advertising, we have done those. We have done those, but uh, we have figured out other organic channels which work m way better and cost you you know way smaller. So we continue to focus there. We are holding on to our cash so that you know we we kind of get to that revenue milestone uh, with enough padding left. And when we do that, you know, the company has very little burn. We don't burn a lot of money. So we, um, we, uh, you know, we'll be we are already cash flow profitable for the last four five months, and um, we we kind of you know putting up a good pile uh, every month. So we, you know, we I think from a business perspective, this is nice. But as I say, you know, growth is where my uh, eyes are set, and uh, that's not going to happen unless we figure out uh, other channels of distribution, which will give us the scale that we need. So uh, we have a long way to go there. You know. So, so I'm sure that you are not looking to raise uh, CDC funding uh, immediately. Not immediately, but we will uh, around uh, around December Jan. We will start looking at. So, up. one last question: What about the competition? Quite a few, as I said. You know, each of these individual products, there are so many of them. If you look at feedback space, there are there are just you know like thousands of them. Yeah. Survey. Um, Kissmetrics uh, company has a has a sister product called uh, Kiss Insights, which was rebranded as Qualaroo. 
um, they compete on the server side. Uh, notifications is a fairly uh, innovative concept, but uh, there are companies like Hello Bar and quite a few uh, who do similar stuff. Uh, so, you know, as such the comp competition exists, but the very fact that, you know, we, we provide this as a bundle with data intelligence on top of it is what we try to focus on, you know, to, to differentiate ourselves.